Okay, let's go ahead and take the square root of this variable expression. And any of you out there that are studying algebra, uh, and I'm talking algebra one, algebra two, or beyond, maybe not quite pre-algebra, but even those of you in pre-algebra are going to see some uh, version of this. But you need to be able to simplify expressions with square roots and what we call radicals. Uh, and this particular problem, there's a couple different ways you can approach it, but there is only one final answer. And I'm actually going to show that to you in one second. So if you want to pause the video and work on that, matter of fact, try to put your answer into the comment section. It's kind of difficult because, you know, you certainly can't put in symbols like radicals, etc. But you can kind of type it out if you want. But uh, I'm going to show you exactly what we need to do to get this uh, correct. And again, if you are taking algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, doesn't make a difference. You're going to have to be able to work with expressions like this. Okay, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, with certainty, all of you, especially those that are struggling in math, all of you can be successful in mathematics. And again, I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time learning math, okay? It doesn't have to be that way. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time, that I promise. If you're preparing for some sort of test with a dedicated math section, a lot of you are going to be taking a test like this. You don't even realize it. We're talking about entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams, things like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, or maybe college placement exams like the Alex or AccuPlacer, if you're going to college, almost all of you are going to have to take that particular exam. We'll leave some of those uh, exams that I mentioned. But anyways, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning uh, homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of great math notes, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. But you got to be able to take your own great math notes. This is one of the keys to be successful in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to show you the answer here in just one second. If you don't want to see it, just pause the video. Uh, but I'm going to show you the answer right now. Okay, so this is the correct answer. So the square root of 32 uh, times x to the fourth times y cubed is equal to 4x squared y times the square root of 2y. Okay, so this is it. The only variations you can have here is you can have these uh, variables uh, kind of like maybe in a little bit different order, this y and this x squared like this. You would never write something like x squared 4y. Remember, this is a coefficient, so your number is always going to go first. But your variables can be uh, kind of reversed. That's not a big deal. Same thing here with this radical portion. Uh, here, you always put that number first. Okay, so if you have a number, uh, that's going to go first. And then you have your variable. You wouldn't write that as y like this. Technically, these are the same. But um, this is not the correct way to write this. But anyways, there you go. This is the correct answer. And how many of you got this right? If you got that right, well, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+. Plus. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you 110% and multiple stars because that was pretty awesome. That the fact that you know how to simplify an expression like this into something like this. Now, uh, there's a couple different ways you can think about doing this problem. It all depends kind of how maybe um, some of the techniques that your teacher emphasized. You kind of need to know all of them, but I'm going to show you what I want to um, suggest is kind of the preferred way to think about doing this. But again, if you got this right and you took a little bit different path than I did, that's perfectly fine. Stick with that. But you might be interested in seeing how I'm going to do this. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so the first thing we want to kind of realize is that when you were taking the square root of a number, like the square root of 4, that's equal to this number, 4, to the 1 half power. So this little radical sign, there's actually a little tiny 2 up here that we don't write. So let's look at the pattern here. So we have the square root of 4 is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half power. This number right here is the denominator. You always have a 1 as a numerator. And let's go ahead and just kind of uh, see this more clearly by the cube root of 5. Okay, so the cube root of 5, you can write that as 5 to the 1 third power. Again, this is your denominator. 
And if you wanted to just to kind of see this in your calculator, let's uh, take this for example, four to the one half power. You can go four, and then you usually have a little key like that. It's called a caret key or a y to the x key, but you got to use parentheses when you're dealing with fractional exponents. So you put one over two. If you put this into your calculator, you'll see you'll get the answer two because the square root of four is two. So, you know, if you don't quite, you know, I don't want to say don't believe me, but if you just wanted to kind of show, uh, prove to yourself that this is in fact, you know, equivalent, we we'll call these are called rational exponents. It's something you absolutely need to know. But we're going to use uh, this concept to uh, solve this particular problem. Now, again, you, you could just break these up into individual uh, square roots, but I'm going to kind of go this path because uh, you need to know rational exponents. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our problem. We have the square root of 32 times x to the fourth times y cubed. Let's go ahead and look at this, okay, or rewrite this problem as 32 x to the fourth y to the cube all to the one half power. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, rational exponents here to simplify this expression. Okay, so before we get going, there's a couple um, rules. Actually, there's a few other different things that you need to know about properties of powers and exponents. And one of them is this. Um, we have this one-half power, then we have uh, various powers. We're basically taking a power to a power. So how does that work in algebra? Well, let's take a general kind of rule, a to the m times b to the n, all that to the x power. Basically, the rule goes like this, or the property. You can just distribute this outside exponent to these um, uh, in, inside exponents, okay? Let me give you an easy example. 2 cubed times 3 to the fourth power, all that, let's say, squared. You would just simply take this 2 and multiply by these internal ex, uh, exponents. So this would be equal to 2 to the what? Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. And then here we have 3 to the 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so that's how the rule works. So we're going to have to keep that in mind when I distribute this one half to all these um, exponents on the inside. But we have a little scenario here. We have 32 that's not expressed as a power. So the next part of this problem is trying to um, ask ourselves, can I express this number as a power? And the best way to, uh, to try to rewrite a number as a power is to prime factor. So just start factoring this number. So 32 is the same thing as what? Oh, it's like 4 times 8. And then uh, 8 is, of course, uh, equal to 2 times 2 times 2. And then 4 is 2 times 2. So 32 is 2 times 2. And then these three twos uh, here. So uh, 2 to the fifth power, we multiply 2 by itself 5 times, that is 32. And I purposely put that number in to make it work out this way because on your typical homework uh, proms, quiz, and test proms, you're going to have a number, something like this, generally that you're going to be able to break down. So let's write 32 as a power. So we'll write it as 2 to the fifth. And of course, we have the rest of our problem right here. And now we're going to take that all to the one half power. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, now let's go ahead and apply that rule. And we're going to multiply this outside exponent to all these interior exponents. So 1 half times 5, that gives us 5 halves. 1 half times 4, that gives us 2 right here. And then y cubed, that uh, to the 1 half will be to the 3 halves. So here's the thing. Uh, a lot of you um, were probably taught something like this. Again, there's a diff very different variations you can take uh, to um, do this problem. And you should know all of them, but this is kind of, in my experience, that when students get to this point, sometimes they get kind of confused with these exponents because we have to kind of convert these back into radicals uh, and simplify from there. So for example, uh, five halves is the same thing as uh, two and one half, right? So if I take five and divide it by two, that's the same thing as two, oops, let me write that a little bit better, two and one half. And then we need to be able to think about uh, the property of multiplication of powers. Let me explain this. So if I have two squared times two to the one half, how do I um, manage this? Well, in algebra, if you have the same base and you're multiplying powers, you simply add the exponents. So two, uh, for example, here, this would be two plus one half or two and one half 
two and I can't even write that, I'll tell you. Maybe because I'm just not giving myself enough room. By the way, too, that happens with a lot of students. They did kind of cram their work. I'm kind of cramming my work here and look what's happening. I'm making mistakes. So learn from my mistakes. Believe me, um, I've made a ton of them through the decades. I still make math mistakes. The key is to try to get them down to the smallest percentage possible. That's why you always constantly got to be double checking your work. Okay, but anyways, you need to understand that. Let's look at one more quick example. If I have 3 to the 7th and I'll multiply it by 3 squared, because the bases are the same, I can simply um, add the exponents when I'm multiplying. So that would be 3 to the ninth power. Okay, so why do I say that? Well, here, if I want to think of 2 to the 5 halves power, I can think of that as 2 to the 2 and 1 half power, but this is very confusing. So you would want to break this up into an expression like this and be like, oh, okay, that's the same thing as 2 squared times 2 to the 1 half. Um, and typically, uh, a lot of times students get kind of confused with that. So let me give you kind of a, um, a little bit easier way to think about this. Now, because we're distributing a 1 half, we're going to be dividing by 2. Okay, so uh, 2 divides nicely into even numbers. So let's kind of rewrite these powers on the inside such that we get a lot of even numbers. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's say 2 to the 5th. I'm going to write that this way, 2 to the 4th, because that 4 is a nice even number. Then I have 2 to the 1st. Okay, so this right here is the same thing as 2 to the 5th. Why to the 4th? I'm going to leave alone because that's a nice even number exponent and then y to the cubed i'm going to write this as y squared okay i want that even number times y to the first now when i distribute this one half let's see what happens okay this makes our life a lot easier so i'm going to take this one half and um, multiply it by all these powers right there so let's go ahead and do this one at a time so this would be uh, one half uh, to two to the fourth to this one half that's one half times four that's going to be uh, uh, 2 squared, right? Because it's 4 times 1 half, 2 squared. So that's that one. And then 2 to the first, okay, this 1 half to that exponent right there is simply just 1 times 1 half. So that's 2 to the 1 half. And I'll talk about more about this in a second. Then y to the fourth times that 1 half is going to be y squared. y squared to this 1 half is simply y to the first. And then I have y to the first times that 1 half right there. That leaves me with y to the um, to the one half power. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start cleaning this up. So two squared is four. Now what is two to the one half? Remember, if I said here is the square root of two, this is equal to two to the one half. So hopefully you can see how these um, rational exponents, especially something like to the one half power, that means the square root. So I'm going to go from rational exponents back into uh, square roots or radicals, and that's typically what's going to be asked of you on uh, particular math questions that you're going to be having, most common type of approach. So you, your teacher is not going to, they may let you leave your answer like this, but probably not, okay? They're probably going to want an, of this type of version. So let's continue on. So I have x squared right here. y to the first is simply just y, and then y to the one half, again, is going to be the same as the square root of y. So here we have four, okay? Let's go ahead and just start um, multiplying, this is all one product. Let's get all the numbers together that are, don't have a radical or square root. So that's 4x squared and y. So this is going to be 4 times x squared times y. We'll write that right there. Now I have the square root of 2 times the square root of y. So what's that equal to? So the square root of 2 times the square root of y, there is a property, uh, again, of radicals and square roots that you could just put this under one big square root. So that says 2 times y or the square root of 2y, and we're going to write that right here, okay? And again, this is your final answer. Some of you, all depending on your teacher, may let you get away with this version uh, of the answer, but I can tell you right now, 99.9% uh, .9 of you are going to have to do this, and even if your teacher is allowing you to, to do that, I'm just telling you, you need to know uh, this stuff. You need to be able to work with these radicals and square roots. And again, there's a couple different approaches. If, if you got this right, okay, uh, and you prefer your method of uh, doing this, then stick with it, okay? But you definitely need to be aware how I kind of manage this, and just really, this is kind of an exercise in working with those rational 
exponents. But um, anyways, hopefully this video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with this stuff, um, I typically teach, well, all this is really like algebra one, but I really get heavy duty into rational exponents equations uh, in the sort, like in my algebra two college algebra course. Of course, some of you might already be at the pre-calculus level and need um, kind of just a quick review on this. But uh, again, what you don't want to do is just be like, yeah, I still don't kind of get this and hopefully I'll never see it again. Don't want to do that because you definitely will if you're going to stick around and continue to learn math, which I hope you do. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.